All right, welcome to part four of my over the Christmas holidays uh, kit reviews. And thanks to everyone who's joining, uh, joining in. Uh, hope you find it interesting and informative. Um, I'm up to, I just checked again, I'm up to 199 subscribers. Uh, so I expect uh, we'll hit 200 shortly. And uh, I'm very gratified and appreciative of that. Uh, I don't do this for subscribers. I don't do it for views. The channel will never be monetized. Uh, but it's nice to know that uh, the people find it interesting enough uh, to like and subscribe. Okay, uh, so today we've got uh, the Douglas F4D-1 Skyray. And from Tamiya, 172nd scale. Uh, this one I got at uh, Matt's NRC Hobby Shop, our local hobby shop here, uh, for $18.99. And at that price, I really snapped it up. The, uh, uh, it's a model from 1998. And as far as I can tell, as far as scale mates is concerned, uh, it's the same box and the same same parts. Uh, nothing's changed since 1998. But as I always say, just because something's old uh, doesn't mean it's not good. And, and that is, that's especially true of uh, Tamiya. So uh, we've got a, a nice box sealed, uh, sealed in plastic. This is... Uh, to me, a catalog number 60741 and made in the Philippines. So, uh, for me, that's a plus. Uh, my wife's Filipino, and uh, anything that's made somewhere else besides you know where, uh, I'm very happy with. Or about. Okay, so we, we've got the usual details here. It's the 172 scale warboard uh, collection and gives you the wingspan uh, and the fuselage length, uh, which is nice. It gives you an idea of how much space it's going to take on the shelf. A uh, wingspan of 14.1 uh, centimeters and uh, 19 uh, centimeters for the, uh, for the fuselage length. Got some nice detail on the on the side of the box here. Very nice detail on the engine nozzle here. And these are pictures of the completed model. And also what's nice is right on the box here they tell you what paints you're gonna need. You don't have to wait to get into it to figure it out. Uh, on the on the other side here, we've got uh, well we we have this particular uh, decal scheme and uh, we've got another one here on the side as well nice box art I don't see a signature and this looks to be a photograph a very nice photograph of the completed kit As always, we start with a bit of history. And uh, this, um, this aircraft was uh, the last fighter uh, designed by the Douglas Aircraft Corporation uh, before they merged with uh, McDonnell Douglas. And it was one of the earliest uh, jets uh, to be purposely designed to fly off an aircraft carrier. Development started in the late 1940s and as you can see it's a delta wing interceptor. Had a very high rate of climb uh, so it could uh, rapidly intercept approaching hostile bombers. Uh, 
development took quite a while. Um, the initial decision was to adopt the Westinghouse J40 turbojet to power it, uh, but that led to a, a lot of problems and the J40 never really went into production. So there was a lot that had to be changed there. Uh, first flight was in June 1954, but a lot of changes need to be made after that. And it wasn't uh, declared ready for fleet introduction until April of 1956. Uh, again, used by both the United States Navy and the United States Marine Corps. Uh, during that era, jet technology was uh, fast and furious. So uh, this didn't have a very long service life. And um, the last, uh, you know, as I said, uh, entered service in April 56 and was withdrawn for service in February 1964. It was, however, uh, quite a remarkable aircraft. Um, and it was the first carrier launched aircraft to hold the world's absolute speed record, having attained a top speed of 752 point nine four three miles per hour uh, which is just below uh, the speed of sound so it wasn't mock capable but it was super quick it also set a new time to altitude record flying from a standing start to forty nine thousand two hundred twenty one feet that's uh come on now about fifteen thousand meters And got there in 2 minutes 36 seconds, all flying at a 70 degree pitch angle. So uh, she, <laughs> she went up pretty quick and uh, at quite an angle. Uh, it did, uh, a, few, a few models uh, remained in service until the end of uh, the 1960s, uh, mostly uh, used for experimental purposes by the uh, by the NACA, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, that was eventually absorbed into what is now NASA. Okay, so uh, let's get into it here. As you can see here, 1899. Normally I don't uh, crack a kit. I uh, get it out of the cellophane until I'm ready to build it. But I'm making an exception here because I'm having fun making videos. So this is my, my first time seeing the kit. Okay, so we've got one, two sprues plus the plastic, the usual Tamiya tech, tech tips, which are very handy for beginner and novice modelers. instructions out here okay so uh, 172 kit two sprues plus the clear parts only looks like those two clear parts and it wasn't a very big aircraft of course you'd expect it to be compact uh, being a, a carrier type aircraft and we got, but we've got nice moldings here, molding lines, panel lines here. Uh, 
all right. So it, it looks pretty basic, pretty basic stuff, but uh, as I said, nice panel lines you can see there. Um, no figure. Go figure, no figure. Uh, which is unfortunate. And again, uh, nice molding, nice panel lines, no flash, uh, cockpit's pretty, uh, cockpit uh, control panel is pretty basic, uh, but uh, can be painted. I'll check and see if we've got, it is a 172 kit, so um, yeah, I'll check and see if we've got some decals for that, but probably not. Uh, again, uh, the cockpit tub is nicely molded uh, with uh, control panel uh, dials and gauges on the side. Weapons. Wheels look just okay. No bent or broken parts. But, you know, seriously, I mean, for $19 Canadian, I'm not expecting a lot um, other than just a nice little kit. More staples. I wish Tamiya would get over those, but they don't seem to want to change that. So here we go. We've got Navy and Marines markings, and yes, there is a decal for the control panel. Uh, as always, with most uh, with most kit makers, there's a there's a nice decal here you could lay down if you're going to put it on a stand. And the usual uh, Tamiya. fairly thick, which I don't mind, although it bothers some people. Um, I find they're super easy to work with, and only very occasionally uh, will they not conform to the surface. A lot of controversy over the new Edward decals which uh, seem to be extremely difficult to work with, although uh, the end results uh, please a lot of modelers. Uh, I've looked at them. Uh, Peter Roxley's looked at them. He's, he's tested them left, right, back, forward. Uh, and uh, for me in particular, they just seem to be more trouble than they're worth. Uh, I don't require uh, that level of looking like it's painted on. Um, quality, uh, especially with all the all the difficulty, you know. There's a there's a film on the surface on the top that needs to be removed later, and uh, it's presented some uh, difficulties uh, for modelers who are much more skilled and experienced than me. So I'm just going to avoid that. And, excuse me, and like I said, I'm, I'm happy uh, with uh, Tamiya stuff. As always, uh, Tamiya provides some nice uh, 
service uh, and history and service notes. And uh, one thing that I didn't mention, uh, what, I'm not going to go over it again. It's mostly what I already said. Uh, but one thing I didn't mention was that um, it never actually saw combat. Um, it was withdrawn from service and, you know, um, was superseded by other, other aircraft. Uh, it did, however, participate in numerous scramble actions in Taiwan in response to crises in the late 1950s. Uh, and I guess those were crises brought about by uh, we all know who. Okay, so uh, let's take a look here. We've got the, the usual fold-out instructions. Um, nothing in color. But they give you that on the box. And uh, for $19 Canadian, I, I'm sure not expecting a glossy colored sheet. Okay, so... Um, the usual to me a format. And as with most, you know, the starts with the cockpit assembly. I had mentioned, let me show you this, people can decide for themselves. Here's, here's to me instructions. And here's Hasegawa instructions. So you see what I mean when I say uh, they look a little busy? Criticizing, I'm just they, they have a little different way of doing things, and because uh, I know there's some huge Hasegawa fans out there, as there should be, they make some great model kits. Although, they uh, they don't do very many new releases, uh, they're mostly older kits uh, that they keep producing, which is just fine, nothing wrong with that. Tried and true, and um, give the people what they want. So there you go. Okay, so we've got the cockpit assembly, and there's a note here refer to page six, seven, and eight uh, for painting the fuselage. Um, I guess that's the inside of the fuselage. Uh, they indicate to put uh, some weight in the um, in the nose uh, I guess that's because it needs weight in the nose huh <laughs> brilliant calf brilliant okay here you go so uh, so we move along here uh, inside the fuselage uh, it shows you where to put the holes and drill the holes for the drop tank um, there was a decent detail on the turbofan here in the back. Fuselage assembly, everything very straightforward, very basic. Landing gear assembly and attachment. Landing gear doors. Etc. Etc. Yeah, I, this doesn't have a pilot. I, I may find one. Uh, actually, I kind of think I have one in mind. Um, but uh, yeah, this is going to be uh, probably wheels down. Then we've got the uh, attaching the canopy, uh, drop tanks, 
various different armaments. And uh, then there's some notes on decorating, painting. Uh, this is the Navy version. This is the Marines version. And, and that's it. Um, some, you know, directions on uh, applying the decals. Uh, aftermarket service card, if you need anything, whatever parts. Um, excuse me, I've never had to, but I guess if you needed to, you could contact me. And uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to send you out whatever you need. For the cost of postage. Okay, so a uh, small kit, fairly uh, fairly quick review. Nice little kit though. It'll just be a weekend build. Uh, pretty basic paint scheme. Uh, nice decal so for it. And uh, yeah, so uh, that'll be a that'll be a great starter for someone just getting into the hobby. And uh, um, yeah, I mean a cool little example. Um, it, you know, it, it reminds me a bit of a, of a, of a firefly, <laughs> yeah, uh, or, uh, as they've indicated here, a flying ray, a manta ray or whatever. Anyways, cool looking little aircraft, and I expect that'll be a, a, a nice fun build. So, uh, thanks to everyone for, for stopping by, and, and, uh, taking a look at what I got to say here. I appreciate all the subscribers, all the viewers, everyone who, who spends time. I know uh, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, time is valuable. Uh, Thomas Edison said that it's the, uh, uh, the most valuable thing in the world. Uh, there's a, uh, I expect it's more myth than actual fact, but uh, the story goes that a group of school children uh, uh, visited Mr. Edison and uh, one of them asked, you know, what's the most valuable thing in the world? And uh, he came back and his answer was time. Also the famous French general Napoleon uh, told his generals, I can give you anything but time. And uh, those are very wide, wise words indeed. Uh, time is the most important thing that we have. Uh, time for ourselves, time for our friends, time with, for our family, most important of all. And uh, time to just try and be good human beings. We're only given a limited amount of it, uh, even if we live to be a hundred. And uh, just as, as with any other commodity, we should uh, use it to the best advantage of, as possible. So uh, that's it for the lecture. Thanks for thanks for stopping by. Uh, thanks for viewing uh, my videos, and I hope everyone has a very happy and safe uh, Merry Christmas, and enjoys time with family and friends over the holidays. Thanks again. We'll be seeing you.